How do we get to Pluto? Practice, practice, practice. We've been working the real hours that we'll be working in 2015, starting at 7 o'clock in the morning and leaving at 11 o'clock midnight at night and then showing up again the next day at 7 o'clock in the morning. But sometimes it's not just about the pressure, but it's about uh, trying to stay awake too. Yeah, there's, there's several teams involved in the process. Navigation will deliver you know, the key files to the mission operations team. We then pass that information on to our planning team. We also have the guidance and control team uh, analyzing those results. Science operations team to make sure that it doesn't affect the, the pointing of the science observations themselves. Meetings play a critical role in, in serving as sort of gates that the folks have to get through before that data is sent up to the spacecraft and can potentially have either a really good or a really bad effect on the mission. There definitely is an element of risk involved. That's why we have so many different teams with different areas of expertise. But from one standpoint, if you didn't do any simulation with the real spacecraft at all, I mean, you could argue that could pose more risk because you don't want a, such a critical activity only being done once on flight. That's a good practice. All right, so you go. Lots is go. Okay. I think we're all go. You go in. <laughs> it's very exciting to be commanding the spacecraft in the middle of the night, even though uh, it might be off most people's regular schedules. You get the feeling that you're there at Pluto, um, and it's 2015. Well, it's, it's the most important because we've best been spending the 24 hours of the most intense activities that we've been running on the spacecraft, and this is the longest that we've been out of contact since we've entered in counter rehearsal. We're, we're good. We're nominal. Spacecraft's nominal, and it looks like um, all the observations that we had planned between the last track and this track happened. So this gives us good confidence that at least the spacecraft has been performing all of those twists and turns that we've been anticipating it to over the last uh, seven days. Now we can go home and hopefully enjoy the next two years of activities. This job is really something I'm passionate about. My husband and I actually met at work, um, are both space geeks and have since had a daughter. It's good to spend some time as a team and relax together. We work a little better when it comes down to the stressful moments. When you fly a mission that from its inception in 2001 to its crescendo in 2015 and its extended mission probably out into the 2020s or 2030s, you really find that your work family becomes an extended family. And breakfast was really just a kind of first celebration that we, whew, we made it through the rehearsal. It's a standard New Horizons toast to infinity and beyond. It's been fantastic. We've accomplished pretty much everything we set out to do and then some, so it's been a great week. I like to say that at the flyby, I don't want to be learning anything about the ground system or the spacecraft of the team. I want to be learning only about the Pluto system. No spacecraft has ever been to Pluto, or, nor will ever go back in our lifetime. It's space. I mean, you know, it's the final frontier. When you think of Facebook and Google, uh, you know, those are, those are office jobs. You know, you go there, you do the nine to five behind the desk. But here, you really feel the impact. You see the grandeur of it all. At the end of the day, there's nothing quite as rewarding as serving a role on a program that's going to further humanity's knowledge of our larger environment, larger than our country or a continent or, or the Earth itself. Knowing that we're contributing to scientific knowledge is incredibly rewarding and uh, you really can't beat that for any amount of money. Being among the first to see pictures come back from a new world is a real thrill and in my job I get to do that. We're not athletes so we don't get to participate in sports events but like athletes we spend years and years training and preparing for these big events. Once a success it feels like winning the Super Bowl or winning the World Series. Getting us there as part of the navigation team getting us there so that we can do the science is really what's most important to me. We don't exactly know what Pluto looks like, but it looks very exciting from the images we have from the Hubble Space Telescope so far. We really can't wait to get there and see what it actually looks like. So if anybody says that Pluto is boring or not important, no way. Pluto is every child's favorite planet. You know, you ask anyone under the age of six and they're going to say Pluto. Probably has to do with Pluto the dog, but... <laughs> Pluto's going to have plenty of surprises, and, and as we get closer to Pluto, taking optical navigation measurements and seeing the atmosphere start to come to light, it will have some subtle effects on how we do our operations. 
it really made a difference to see the big picture and just practicing what we're going to do when the real thing comes in 2015. All the people on this mission contribute heavily to this project and in a sense everybody is a critical piece of that. And so it's very much a team sport, not an individual sport. This is really pedal to the metal despite the fact that we practice it on the ground, run it through the simulator over and over. Nothing substitutes for actually putting it up on the bird and seeing it operate flawlessly. We're rounding third base and we're headed home. How do we get to Pluto? Practice, practice, practice.